Okay, so this is not technically part of the timing belt job, but when I take the time out of my crazy life to do something like this, I like to just go ahead and replace everything. So, um, now this is actually totally fine. I mean, it's like a little warm, but it's not bad. It's, it's still doing a good job. Um, however, I made a huge order, so I got, here's the part number here, um, a new one. Now, um, this is the, the tensioner side. This is the, the pulley side, and I've got a new pulley too, since my old one was quite shot. This I did need to replace. This this I didn't, but I'm going to say this is a spare since I plan on driving this precious car forever. Um, I don't know if someday they're just not going to make stuff like this anymore, so... I don't know. I'm, I, I save everything. But anyways, one thing I did notice was you see how the thickness of the old tensioner versus the new tensioner. So these bolts aren't going to fit. So I just had to find uh, I just had to find bolts. I mean, I, I have a whole stash of, of Volkswagen hardware, but I had to find some bolts that were like a little bit shorter and just sort of measure them. This, will, this one goes all the way through um, just to make sure that that this um, this tensioner assembly would work. And then, of course, whenever you pull this out, just make sure that you lubricate the shaft inside of there so that everything moves nice and smoothly and life is good. Um, yeah, I've actually seen these C's inside of there. Only in New England, though, not here in Texas. But um, if you've got a car in New England, it lasts this long. <laughs> um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, now I'm going to get back to the timing belt. All right, so now I'm just swapping my thermostat and the thermostat housing from my old unit into my new unit. And you can see that the one here from the Continental kit has that metal impeller, and that's the one that you want, or that's the one at least that I want. <laughs> now I'm just going to install this, and you can see there my surface is all nice and clean and smooth and I'm not going to put anything on there. The old one that was on there did have some goop. I'm not sure why. Did I do that? I don't know. Um, I don't remember doing that, but that was a while ago, but I'm not going to put anything aside from the O-ring on there um, and that'll be all that I need. All right, now that my water pump is on, I can go ahead and put my auxiliary shaft pulley back on. Um, now, this is the exact same pulley as the cam pulley. It has the exact same part number, so if you mix them up, no big deal. And this, of course, is keyed, so I'm going to go ahead and can same as before in order to tighten it. Put my 13 millimeter socket on that bolt. Have my 18 millimeter socket. Now we gotta put this guy in position, and believe it or not, the direction of this actually does matter because this runs our distributor. So we've gotta face this towards cylinder number one. And if you don't know where that is in the distributor, you can just follow that spark plug wire, but I'll tell you, um, it's actually right about there, facing towards spark plug wire number one, right in there. What's also really cool and a good way to double check if you've set your distributor timing properly is that there is, I'm not sure if you can see right there, on the plastic there's a little cutout and that corresponds to a mark, a notch, on the actual distributor housing itself. And obviously the, the plastic, um, you'll see how there's little tabs where it sits, where the clips go. So, um, but once again, even if you don't have those plastic, the notch is actually on the distributor. I don't know if all ABAs have this, but mine does. So it's a great way for me to double check that I did my pink distributor timing correctly. And sort of moving up the engine. Next, I'm going to put my tensioner on. Um, and the Conti kit actually comes with all new hardware. So I'm just going to pull off this old post, put on this new stuff. Obviously, the holes is going to face out. Washer goes on like so. And obviously, I'm not going to tighten this now. I'm just getting it ready because now I'm going to put on my cam pulley. Oh, and you see I replaced my 
cam seal. Okay, now that cam pulley's on, and in order to tighten the cam pulley, I just use my 19 millimeter socket on my ratchet, and then I actually just held the pulley in place, like so, and tighten like so. Now, before I do, I'm always going to compare new and old. This They make it super easy because here we got the part number is the same, and it shows it replaces the same part, so that's awesome. But once again, I'm going to just verify the width is the same, and also the length is the same. Why am I doing that? Just so if something goes wrong or if I have any questions, I'm not just, you know, I'm not going crazy. I'm, I'm verifying that that is not the cause. I'm ruling out the cause. The belt is the issue. Now this, this side is the side where we're going to be adjusting tension. So the side where I really want the tension to be spot on is, is this side. To install my new belt, I'm just going to start by hooking it over that crank pulley. And then I'm going to install, I'm just going to put in that hook right there. Not too tight. You don't want to damage it. I'm just hanging it there. Hope it stays. <laughs> um, then I'm going to install my lower timing cover and then my crank pulley just to make sure that everything is lined up and I am on time with the crank. Okay, so there we go. I have my lower timing cover installed and my crank pulley temporarily installed. And you can see that I painted the arrow yellow to make it a little easier for myself to see in my dark shop. Um, then I put my timing belt on, or rather I just pulled it over the cam pulley. Last, I put that nut and washer on. And now I'm just going to tighten up the belt. Now that I've verified that I've got time on my cam, time on my crank, and of course, time on my distributor. Alrighty, and now I'm gonna tension my belt. Got my special tool that I got from the parts place for moving this tensioner, and I've also got my shorty 17 millimeter. Now, I've got my shorty because I don't wanna put too much torque on this nut, because I'm gonna be torquing this after. I'm just gonna sort of snug it into place once I get it to feel. So now you're just gonna put these two little notches of the tool into the two little notches of the tensioner, rotate it clockwise. You wanna tighten it until you can rotate the belt about 90 degrees or so, but no more. Obviously, if you make the timing belt too tight, it's gonna scream at you. <laughs> it's gonna whine afterwards. So uh, definitely don't wanna make it too tight. And if you make it too loose, you'll hear a sort of flapping sound over here underneath the timing cover. So if, uh, if you've done it wrong, it'll tell you <laughs> by making a funky sound. Now I've got my 17 millimeter socket and I've set my torque wrench to 33 foot pounds. There we go. Now I've got my 19 millimeter 12 point and I'm gonna put this on the crank pulley and I'm just gonna turn my engine over a bunch of times. Make sure that I don't feel any resistance, I don't feel any piston sitting valves or anything like that. And I'm also gonna double check my timing marks after I turn it over um, a bunch of times. So far so good. So obviously every two rotations of the crank is one rotation of the cam and uh, or one full engine rotation. So I am going to do that a bunch more times because I'm paranoid. <laughs> I recommend just doing two full rotations of the engine and double checking twice. Um, also double checking your distributor timing and then you're good to go. I'm going to permanently install, well semi-permanently at least for now, um, install my lower timing cover and my crank pulley and then I'm gonna start putting everything back together. Um, now obviously you saw me take everything off. 
um, installation is just the reverse of removal. So um, I think you can probably handle that. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks y'all, bye.